So Sean, I have some cash money that's burning a hole in my pocket. So what are you gonna do with it? I'm gonna buy a house. Wait, <laughs> before you do that, you gotta know these five things you gotta do before you buy that home. Yes, these are five things not to do before you buy a home in St. George, Utah. So stay tuned. What's up everybody, I'm Sean Dezod. And I'm Courtney Dezod, and we're with Keller Williams Realty right here in St. George, Utah. And if you wanna know everything about living in St. George, don't forget to press on the subscribe button, and don't forget to press on the little bell so you're notified every time that we upload a new video, because we upload new videos every week. Yes, and honestly, we love making these videos. How much do we love making these videos? They're, they're fun. Yeah, they are. But you know what we love more? We actually love to help you with your real estate needs. So whether you're looking to buy or sell a home, what you want to do is you want to give us a call, shoot us a text, or send us an email. Or you can reach out to us via WhatsApp. However you want to get a hold of us, we've got your back. Because remember, we're licensed realtors. So that's what we do for a living. So Courtney, what are these five things that you like? You absolutely have to know that you cannot do when you're buying a home in St. George, Utah? Yeah, these are five mistakes that people make. And so one of the mistakes that we see people make all the time that buyers make is that they start, you know, they, they kind of waste their time looking at homes that really aren't going to work for them. And they, instead of doing that, they should really just focus in on what do they actually want and focus on that narrow thing. So, so talk about that. Yeah. I mean, obviously when you're moving to a new area and then, you know, obviously you're going to there's so many different properties, so many different areas, you kind of get to get lost in the minutia, right? You don't know, like, you know, what's important to you because this market, it moves pretty fast. So you don't want to necessarily let one slip so by. I mean, case in point, when we were first moving to St. George here, we, you know, we weren't completely clear about what we were looking for. And we missed out on a property that still pains me to this day that we missed out on. And it's just like, ugh, like, had we like, you know, had we been clear about what we wanted, we would have zeroed on that property and got, you know, like, and got it. So the yeah, thing is, basically, to, to put it, make it more concrete, is like, we were focusing, instead of, we really found out that there was just this little area that we really wanted. And instead we were focusing kind of like outside of that, kind of too far away. Yeah, it wasn't practical. Yeah, it wasn't practical where we wanted to be. And we were just kind of wasting our time doing that. Cause there's only so many properties that you can kind of have going on in your mind, right? So because we were focusing on these other things, this other one kind of slipped by. Yeah. But that's another reason why, you know, if you have a real estate professional in your corner, they can also be, you know, your eyes and ears on the ground and they might notice a home that you you kind of just like didn't even notice. Yeah, they, you go through your needs and wants and you know what's important to you and then that person that's familiar with the area, you know, they can actually like go, okay, well based off what you're telling me, these the, these areas, these pockets here would, would, would really satisfy that need. So another thing you wanna make sure you don't do is don't go into this home buying process without getting pre-approved for a loan. Of course, if you're using a loan, I mean, if you're cash, it's different, but explain. <laughs> Why do you need to get pre-approved for a loan? Yeah, so if you're looking to do financing, so pre getting a pre-approval does a few things for you. One, it kind of tells you what, how much, you know, what it is you're looking for because the interest are shifting so much that what you think you might be approved for, you actually aren't, or you're like, way, or you may be well below your budget. So I have people like all the time, kind of, they think that they're going, okay, I want to buy a property at seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. You're going, okay, well. Why? You know, why that number? Like, where where did that come from? And they kind of just did some back of the napkin math, and then they figured out, oh, this is what they want. You go, no, let's actually talk to a lender. First, find out what you qualify for, but two, also find out what your budget truly is, because you may find that that mortgage payment of, you know, $4,000 a month gets you something more or less than what you thought in your head as far as a purchase price. So it's why, why waste your time on properties that are either outside your budget or you're letting property slip by that were actually within your budget, you just said actually didn't know it. So that's the first part. But secondly, is that when you have your pre-approval, that's what we need to submit your offer because any, you know, like most sellers, almost all sellers, they want, when you're submitting your offer to them, you, they want to actually see not just that you wrote an offer. Great, you know, good for you. You wrote an offer that you're interested in the property. I, but I want to write an offer for that ten million dollar property. Yeah, exactly. You know. Okay. Great. <laughs> let, accept, offer accepted. But the thing is, what they want is like, okay, let's see. They don't know who you are. They don't know you personally. So they're going, okay. Well, what what's your qualifications? Are how far along are you in the process? They don't want to take their property off the market for someone that's not going to actually be capable of following through on closing the deal. So another thing that you don't want to do is get like a ton of advice from a ton of different people, especially people, you know, 
that don't really know anything about real estate. I mean, obviously we know, you know, you love, you know, Grandma Bernice, but she might not actually know what she's talking about when it comes to purchasing a home in St. George. Or Grandma <laughs> Bernice may know her stuff. So, you, I mean, I'm, we're not saying not to listen to anybody, but sometimes there's too many cooks in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. Like, and so you're kind of going, okay, you're just getting like conflicting advice. And so it just makes you really confused. I had a client they were like, you know, interested in what's one area of, you know, like St. George. And all of a sudden they were sort of getting like so many different like inputs from family and friends and, you know, and they just got totally, you know, frazzled where they didn't, you know, they were almost like analysis paralysis. They couldn't make a decision and it just kind of worked out, you know, it just was one of those things where I think it just kind of almost like ruined it for the whole experience for them. And they just kind of gave up. I mean, it was kind of one of those sad situations where they could be in a ton of equity at this point. But because they just got, you know, again, they just got such conflicting information. And again, there are your confidants that you go, okay, I trust this person's opinion. Totally get that. But when you're just hearing from everyone, like, you know, the person on the street, you know, like, you know, like these, just these uh, acquaintances, that's not going to help. I mean, again, it's just too many people and you're just going to get too many conflicting information. Yeah. And what I always say too, I mean, we're going to give you our best advice, but we're never going to try to pressure you to do anything. What I always tell people is like, you have to do what you know is right for you. Like ultimately it's your decision. What do you feel? What is your intuition telling you? I mean, only you know what is right for you. So obviously we can give you our best professional advice, but ultimately it's up to you and it shouldn't matter honestly what anybody else thinks. So another big mistake that people make, and this is a big in a big, you know, a hot market. They think that if they put an offer on a home, then they are married to that home. And, that, and what happens is then they say, okay, I don't want to put an offer on this home because I don't want to, like, what if I don't like it, right? And so then they, so what happens is they miss out on homes that ultimately they would have liked because they don't realize that when you put an offer on a home and then ultimately get it accepted, there are many times that you can back out of the deal. So explain what are the outs that you have? Just because you put an offer on something and get it accepted, that doesn't mean like the deal is done. Yes, exactly. So you have in built-in offer what they call contingencies. So basically you have your deposit and that's protected within certain timeframes as long as you have these contingencies in place. So the three primary ones are your appraisal contingency, your loan contingency, and your inspection contingency. So these are the ones where you're going through the property, you're doing your due diligence because yeah, what people will do is that they'll get freaked out going, okay, I don't, I don't know if I want to write an offer or, or accept this counter offer or whatever, because they, they all, they have more, they have a bunch of questions, which again, you should, I mean, it's not like, you know, unless the property, like unless everything was laid out to you before you bought the property, like the seller did their home inspection, which pretty much very rarely happens. So there you are, you are not, you know, you're going to have questions and that's okay. Like that's, that's what the whole home buying process is for where, we put in the offer, we go ahead and we're given disclosures. We're finding out what the, what the seller knows of the history of the property as they know it. So they're disclosing that to you. So then you kind of review that, make sure that's okay. You're getting your homeowners association information. So you're making sure that the, the, the HOA is solid and you're, you're satisfied with that. And on top of that, you have your inspection. You can run, you, you're hiring a home inspector most likely, making sure the property, the pro property is in the condition that you're comfortable with. And if it's not, we can always like, you know, respond back with some sort of repair request, kind of saying to the seller, okay, these are things that we didn't know and we want to make sure, you know, we want these things taken care of because we weren't aware of these, these issues. And so, and then, so those are like, and then plus you have your loan to make sure that your loan goes through and the appraisal makes sure the property is worth what you're buying it for. So you have all these like, protections in place as a buyer to be able to back out of the deal if, you know, things are just not looking right. Yeah, I mean, for example, my best friend, this doesn't have to do with, with Utah because uh, she is buying property in Florida right now and she found this property and she loved it and she wanted it. But then she started was like hemming and hawing. She's like, I don't know what I should do. I think I should just go out and check on it first. When she got there, it was already gone. Yeah. Oh, okay. So it, what she should have done is honestly like put an offer on it, sign on scene, and then get the offer accepted. And then that's when you can do your due, due diligence. This isn't like a really hot market. Yeah. And on top of that, too, is that that's what we're here for, because we can actually help you do virtual tours. So you're not seeing it blind just by some pictures. We know what we do is we actually like our team goes out there and like previews a property for you. We'll do like a FaceTime preview or like in a neighborhood tour you know, or video. Mm -hmm. So you're going to get a sense of how the property feels. So you have a decent idea. And then on top of that, of course, you know, we recommend you coming out to the property. But the thing is, these markets move fast. 
And you know, again, you have your outs, but you know, time is of the essence with a lot of these properties. So another big mistake that people make is they want to see, they want to come here, you know, for a weekend or whatever, and they want to see, you know, 20 houses in two days. So why is this a mistake? Okay, this. Okay, we we can only handle so much input, right? Like it's as just, a human, the human yes, brain. <laughs> the human brain, things start to like you know, honestly, anything more than five properties in a given day, things start to run. You're like, wait, was that house number two or three that had? this particular, you know, like a den or whatever it might be, like these these attributes that you zeroed in on. And then it, like when you're seeing more than five, it just starts to become one big blur. And so yeah. I- And also you get so tired. It becomes like a negative experience. Oh yeah, exactly. You get, you're so exhausted and it's just, you know, and even if the right property did come up, but it was towards the end of that like viewing, you're just like, I'm I'm done. I'm just cooked right now. So, so the thing is, is that what you want to do is one, you want to take nice notes, right? Like get, for each property that you do see. So you're going, you know, so you can recommend, you know, you can remember certain things about attributes about these properties that really resonated either positively or negatively. But on top of that, you want to keep it kind of tight. Like, you know, honestly, five properties is really the max you should be seeing on any given day. Which is, which goes back to our first point, which is why you really want to hone in on find out like, what is it exactly that you want? Like, you don't want to be wasting time on properties that you know, in reality, you're never going to live there. Yeah. And then we will say like, even piggyback on that, you know, we certainly recommend you going out, checking out these different areas. That's not, you know, like you might find that certain areas, like you didn't think would work for you, but do totally understand that. But when you're actually seeing individual properties, you want to keep it to really five max in a given day. So that's it. That's our video. And remember, we are licensed realtors right here in the state of Utah. So as much as we love like doing these videos, what we love more is to help you with your real estate needs. So whether you're looking to buy or sell a home, what you want to do is you want to give us a call, shoot us a text, or send us an email. Or you can reach out to us via WhatsApp. However you want to get a hold of us, we've got your back.